welcome everyone into part two of our GM 3.6 series. If you missed part one, um, just to quickly get you up to speed, talked about how we ended up at this point. Uh, the old engine that was in the 2011 Traverse decided to go uh, knock, knock, boom, and blow some holes out of the side of the block. So used engine getting installed into that vehicle, and before I install the used engine, I wanna go ahead and kind of bulletproof it and take care of the common concern on these 3.6s, which is timing chain stretch, okay? Or timing chain wear, whatever you might wanna call it. So in order to um, make sure that we're using some quality parts today, I reached out to Melling. Melling sent me over a timing chain kit and an oil pump because you know, when we're in there, we might as well take care of the oil pump as well, which is mounted right here. So. If you're not familiar, check out melling.com. You can look up your parts right on there with their parts finder function. And then they also have uh, ways that you can reach out to them for technical support and assistance. So today we're using part number 3-753, S as in Sam. That's gonna be our timing chain kit. And our oil pump itself is gonna be part number M353. Now there's an important thing here to note on this oil pump. You'll see in your timing chain kit when you buy one, that it's gonna include the oil pump uh, chain guide, the one that's mounted onto the oil pump right here. Well, these two bolts right here have a special torque value or a special sequence involved with the oil pump itself. And you'll see when we get out our new oil pump here that it actually has that guide already installed in it, okay? We don't wanna be loosening these two bolts. If you're not installing the oil pump, you don't wanna be taking these two bolts out with this guide because then you're possibly disrupting the two halves of this oil pump, okay? Now you'll also see with our timing chain kit, we did receive the new guide that would go on there, okay? What would be a better course of action here is pulling the plastic uh, rubbing block or the plastic piece off of here, this guide material, pull this off of the old one, the plastic piece, and take this plastic piece and attach it to the old bracket, I guess. That way we're never disturbing these two bolts, okay? Just uh, you know, something good to know. These are specially, uh, specially torqued or specialty uh, you know, mating between the two halves of the oil pump, okay? Don't disturb them if you're doing this job. So again, we got to this point, pulled the engine down and apart, and uh, this is a uniquely timed engine. We're working with three different independent timing chains here. Uh, the left, uh, excuse me, the right side, secondary chain, the left side secondary chain, and the primary chain down here. Now, every time I talk about this, this is the right side. Even though it looks like it's on the left of the engine, this is the right side secondary chain. This is the left side secondary chain, okay? So just keep that in mind. And you can always tell, if you look on the face of the intake cam phaser, the left side will be marked with a small L, and the right side will be marked with an R. These two phasers are two different part numbers. So if you're replacing phasers because maybe you're dealing with bent valves or something like that where you're pulling the cylinder heads or you're just replacing phasers because you're in here, um, R goes on the right side, okay? These are specific to the sides. The exhaust cam phasers are not labeled. They're not specific to either side, okay? So just keep that in mind. So also unique with this system is the fact that it runs a two different stages for timing. There's stage one and stage two timing. So stage two timing is to get the right side camshaft in time. Stage one is for the left side camshafts and the crankshaft. So the secondary chain on the left side and the primary chain are on stage one. The secondary chain on the right side is on stage two. Okay, it's important to know because we're gonna put this thing into stage one and stage two timing as we're moving through the remo removal process as well as the installation process. Now, this procedure, for whatever reason, seems really a lot more difficult than I think it needs to be. There's not really one procedure that lists out all of the steps for this looking through the service information. It's a tricky thing to find. So I'm gonna to try to simplify this as much as possible. The right side chain is the first one to come off and the last one to go on the primary chain is in the middle in both procedures, and then the left side chain is the last to come off and the first to go on. So we're gonna start with the engine in stage two timing. So what that means, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna spin the crankshaft over until we line up our yellow, well, I, I marked these with yellow so they're easier to see, until we line up our crankshaft mark 
with the mark that is on the oil pump here, which I would say is at about the eight o'clock time, something roughly around there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna just crank this engine clockwise until we bring that mark up even with that. Now you'll know you're in stage two timing when the flats of the backsides of the camshafts are facing upwards, okay? That's how you're gonna know. Right now, we are actually one full crank revolution out. We're 180 degrees off on our cams, so that means we have to bring the crank around one more time, okay? This is important to note. You have to make sure that the flats of the cams are facing upwards when you're in stage two timing, and that'll come into play on stage one timing as well. You have to make sure the flats of the cams are facing up, okay? Remember, the, the crankshaft can be out 360 degrees. The crank spins twice for every single camshaft revolution. The other way to know is you want the little letters that are on the face of the phasers, you want them facing up. So I just highlighted the, them here with uh, a paint marker. You can see that they're all facing downwards right now. So we are not in stage two timing. Even though our crankshaft is lined up with the oil pump here, that looks like stage two timing, but the camshafts are 180 degrees off. So we spin the crankshaft around a full 360 degrees to spin the camshafts 180 degrees. And now you'll see, as I get this thing close, now you'll see that those little marks are all at the top and on the back sides of our camshafts, our flats are facing upwards, okay? By doing it this way, you don't need to use the special tools that are, uh, they say that you need to. Basically, those special tools were to ensure that you have the camshafts in the right phase, I guess, that the, the crankshaft is on the, whatever, the compression stroke instead of the exhaust stroke or whatever it is. Um, I mean, I'm assuming at this point that cylinder one is at top dead center. I don't really know, and I, I guess for the most part, I don't really care. We have the marking lined up on our crankshaft and our flats are facing up, the right side of the engine is now in phase two timing. So now we're ready to go ahead, pull our tensioner and take the chain off. All right, there's our tensioner. And pull the tensioner. There's the tensioner guide. The other guide. and there's our secondary chain for the right side of the engine, okay? So we'll do a little comparison here with the new and the old chain here in just a second. All right, so now these camshafts can't move if we spin the crank, okay? These camshafts are where they need to be. Again, the flats are facing upwards. Now to do the secondary chain on the left side and the primary chain, we gotta go ahead and put this engine into stage one timing. So what we're gonna do again, we're just gonna crank the engine over clockwise, bring it around, and now we're gonna bring our mark to roughly the five o'clock position, right about there. Now the issue is we've only gone around uh, less than one full turn, and if we look at the tops of our camshafts, they are not on the flats, okay? And our letters here are not facing upwards like they should. This is because we're 360 degrees out on the crankshaft right now. We are not in stage one timing at this point. We have to bring the crank around one more time, one more revolution. And by the way, I pulled the spark plugs on this already to um, just ease in this cranking over. It just makes it a heck of a lot easier to spin the engine over when we're not building compression. Okay, so now the flats of our camshaft are facing upwards. The marks on here are a little bit different in phase one timing. So actually, it's the R on the intake cam and the L on the 
exhaust cam that are facing upwards, they're right here. And our mark is down here at the five o'clock position. Flats are up, we're now in stage one timing, okay? Always make sure that the flats are facing upwards. And now we're ready to go ahead and remove our primary chain and our uh, secondary chain for the, uh, for the left side. And now remember, and it's actually kind of nice that GM did this, these two bolts are different size for this guide, so we're not gonna touch it. If you're not doing an oil pump, do not touch these two bolts. They're 13 millimeter, they're a different size than all of the other guides on this engine, and that's for a reason. Do not touch them if you're not replacing the oil pump. Okay, there's really no reason to have to remove them at this point. You can get the chain off of the two idler sprockets here and off of the crank without pulling that, uh, that guide out. Okay, so there's our primary chain. And then let's go ahead and remove the left side, left side secondary chain. And there's the tensioner guide. chain guide, and off comes our chain. So there's our secondary chain for the left side. So let's just do a quick comparison on chain length and see if we can actually notice any difference between these two. So I don't know about you guys, but uh, that appears to be a rather significant difference. Let me hold them Wow, so there's definite what looks to be chain stretch or chain wear on the old chain, at least the one that came off of the, you know, off of the left side here. All right, then we can remove these two, uh, these two free spinning sprockets. Wow. So there's one. And you'll note, note that these two are different sprockets, so I'll just set them off to, to the two different sides here. That way I don't, uh, don't mix them up later when I put them on. Okay, then I gotta, I gotta take my bolt back out of the crankshaft here so I can get the crank sprocket off because it's just, uh, it's loose right now. So there's our crank sprocket, which we'll be putting a new one on and now we just gotta pull our, pull our oil pump off of there. So right there, guys, I pulled the wrong bolt, and I kind of did that unintentionally. This bolt isn't supposed to come out, so the two, the two uh, guide bolts really have no effect on this thing getting bolted into place. 
pull off our oil pump, make a big mess. Wish I would have grabbed a drain pan, but uh, there's our oil pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this entire thing all cleaned up and prepped for, prepped for our new chain installation. So I'm gonna get all the gasket surfaces clean. I'm gonna get all the old RTV off of there and uh, everything nice and cleaned off. Inspect some oil passages, make sure everything looks great and ready to go. And then, um, then we'll come back and install the new chain set, the new oil pump. Uh, we got some new spark plugs to throw in here, a bunch of gaskets and stuff. So uh, the main point here is to show you guys the timing system. I'm gonna do a lot of the rest of it um, off camera. So I'll be right back. All right, so with everything cleaned up and ready to go, the first thing to do here is going to be install our, our new oil pump. Again, this is a Melling part number uh, M353. So we're gonna go ahead and install this. It does come with three new bolts. So we just simply slip it over the crankshaft, line up the, the flats, and then line it up with the, uh, with the block. So all I've done is snug them. Now I'll torque them down to 18 foot pounds. All right, so with the oil pump installed and ready to go, we're ready to start putting our chain on. Remember now we're in stage one timing and I've gone ahead and marked the sprocket itself on the cam phaser where the chain's gonna go lining up with the tiny little L on there. There's a corresponding circle on or dot on the uh, sprocket itself. That's where our colored link is gonna go on the chain. Uh, so we have uh, two pink links and a, uh, and a yellow link on there. So the two pink, Links are gonna correspond with the L on the camshaft sprockets, on the phaser sprockets. And then this yellow link down here will correspond with the small little circle on here. So we'll look through that little sight window to see that yellow link. Now the way to tell the difference with the idler sprockets, if you've gotten them mixed up, um, the one that has the, I call it the backing plate or what tightens up against the engine block itself, that's gonna be the one excuse me, the, the left side here is gonna be the one that tightens up against the block and has the uh, sprocket here on the inner side. So it's got the, the, t the plate that tightens up against the block and the inner sprocket. The other one has the plate against the block and then the outer smaller sprocket. That's for our right side, plate against the block, inner sprocket for the, uh, for the left side. It should be pretty straightforward, but just in case. So we'll go ahead and we'll get that put on. This will get torqued down to 43 foot pounds. And you can see without the, without the guides on either side here, you can still spin this guy. So it gives you the ability to then uh, make sure that it's, it's timed right before you put in the guides. So we'll go 43 foot pounds on here. All right. And then we'll spin this guy around and get our link lined up. And then we'll install, we'll start on the tensioner side with the, uh, the tensioner side's um, guide. So 
So again, that's just loose in there. Now we gotta just get the, make sure our yellow link is still lined up in the circle like it should be. Looks good. And we can install the other guide. Making sure that you're not gonna pinch the chain between the block or the head and the guide itself. You gotta make sure the chain actually makes it onto the guide. It's kinda hard when the bolts are sticking out. But there we go. All right, so both of those are in. You can still see our yellow through there. Now it's time to find our tensioner for this side. So you can see that one obviously doesn't fit. This one is for the, uh, for the crankshaft or for the primary chain. If you're wondering which tensioner goes where, Look at the backside where the oil hole is on the gasket. This one's got a big oil hole up near the uh, up near the corner. That corresponds with this side right here, where this one has a uh, big openings here. That's going to correspond with those openings there. And you'll see that they're already in the compressed position with the pin loaded in there right now. Don't pull this pin until you're certain that it's in time. Otherwise, you'll have to go ahead and reset everything. All right, that's good, that's good. And you look through your sight window and that's good. Before I pull the pin, I'm gonna go ahead and just torque down all of these bolts. They all go down to 18 foot pounds. So tensioner and guides, 18 foot-pounds, the sprocket, 43. Everything is torqued down. We'll verify one more time that our left side secondary chain is in time. We are on our L mark here with a pink, um, pink identifier on the chain. We're on our L mark here, pink identifier on our chain. One more time, we're in um, position one. Both of our cams, are uh, the flats are facing up. And then down here, we look through our little sight window and we're seeing the special yellow link. This side's in time. Go ahead and pull the, pull the pin. And I'll just flex it a couple times just to see how it feels. Kind of gets everything nice and snug here. That is good to go. We're ready to move on to our primary chain. Okay, so for the primary chain, now we're ready to put that on. We're gonna start off with installing of our, uh, of our idler here. And that's going to be that's going to be tightened to 43 foot pounds. And we can go ahead and install our primary chain now. This does have a small mark right there. Let me go ahead and paint marker those so we can see them clearly. So we got a mark here. And we have a mark right here. So that's where our yellow links are gonna line up. So we'll line it up here, down here, and here. So we'll start on the one that's fixed right now because this is attached to uh, our secondary chain on the, on the left side cam.
So if you run into this issue where you don't really have enough chain to get over this sprocket, it doesn't want to go on there, and you have a lot of slack over here, you can actually see we're not lining up properly down here. We're about half a tooth off right now, which tells me that our cams aren't in the exact right position. That could be because we're not using the special tools to hold them in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shift this just a tiny bit to the right, which is going to pull this entire unit to the right slightly. And then that'll bring us into alignment on our crankshaft. So what, we're, what probably happened here is that we had stretch in this chain. So when we pulled everything off, it pulled off in the proper location. But because of that stretch in the chain, now things aren't lining up quite perfect. And a new chain is going to be less forgiving when we're installing it. So I'm just going to very gingerly take and uh, move this engine over just slightly. And I think I'll do it right on, right on this guy right here. So by just, just kind of tapping on the cam here, it's going to pull the whole assembly around. Now we're still not quite into time there. There we go. So now it fit in. Onto the crankshaft, we have much less slack there, and we very easily end up over our other idler pulleys. So what really probably ended up happening here is this, uh, this chain on this side was almost half a tooth loose on here, which when we took the engine all apart, or we took the timing all apart, um, well, we thought we were you know, perfectly in time on here, it actually was slightly off. We were actually about half of a tooth off down here on the crank. So just kind of interesting, but we, all we did was you know, just tap that over a little bit. We're still lined up like we should be. We can still see our yellow marker through here. We're still where we need to be, so everything is still good to go. Um, you know, if we had the special tools, be able to fit them onto the flats of the cam and they should fit perfectly in place. So if you have the special tools, that'll make sure that the cams are perfectly in alignment and our crankshaft is, you know, perfectly in alignment. Everything is happy now. It just happens to be that we were slightly off, most likely because of that uh, stretch chain. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and install the primary chain guide. These are once again 18 foot pounds, but I'll torque them after I get the, uh, the rest of this installed. And then we can put our tensioner into place here. And we have our gasket on the back, so we don't have to worry too much about that. All right, torquing everything down to 18 foot-pounds. All right, so we are on, on our idler on the right bank, we're on, on the idler on the left bank, and we are on, on our mark on the crankshaft, which is lined up against the oil pump. Everything is looking really good here, so now we can go ahead and spin the engine into phase two timing so we can go ahead and get our uh, last chain on this engine.
Oh, before we spin the engine, we got to pull the pin on our primary chain. All right, that feels really good. Everybody looks happy. Everything looks like it's in place. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to spin the crankshaft around just a little bit to bring our, our, uh, our mark up to this mark up here at about that 8 o'clock position. About like so. Now our colored links, and we're on the R and the R over here for the right head, and then our other link, our yellow one, should line up with this, this hole down on this side. So let's see how that does. On there, and so you can see already I can't get this, uh, this chain on here. There was, um, you know, must have been some slack or some stretch in the old chain, so I'm just going to try to not lose my fingers. Be careful when you do this because there's, you know, valve spring tension on here. If I tried to spin this by hand and suddenly the tension released or something like that and spun this cam around, um, I could really tear up my hands with this sprocket. So I'm just going to use a, a ratchet here and I'm just going to ever so gently tap it until we get in. There we go. So now the chain is locked in to its position on the R, the other R, coming down here. We should line up with our circle like so. And you can see I'm pinching the chain here because it is possible to have enough slack in the chain that you could line this up off, okay? See now we have no tension or we have more tension over here and less here. Be careful here. You want to make sure that you get that perfect in there. So you got to actually pull tension on both sides. But we'll, uh, we'll install our guide here and that should help us out in this regard. So now you'll see that I'm battling it on this side now too, right? I'm, if you look close, I'm about half a tooth off on getting this guy lined up as well. We have a little bit of slack there, but I just can't pull it tight enough. Oh, there we go. Got it pulled tight enough there, but now I've slipped off up here. So we are slightly, appear to be slightly out of time here. So I'm just gonna take this guy, give it a little nudge. And I'm gonna just try to get everything to line up in place where it should, like so. Once again, I've slipped off of this camshaft up here. There we go. And you'll see just how much that moved just by slipping that back on. And now we can get the tensioner installed.
Once again, torquing everything to 18 foot-pounds for our guides and tensioner bolts. And then re-verification. So we're on the R, on our little triangle on the uh, intake camshaft for our right bank. We're on the R, on the little triangle for our exhaust camshaft on the right bank. We are on our guide where we should be. And if we go ahead and take a look down here, we are perfectly lined up with our, our circle there. Um, the, when you look straight onto it, the yellow link should be centered over that circle. If it's half a tooth off or whatever, one tooth off, it'll be only halfway onto, uh, onto that circle. So with that, we'll go ahead and release the, uh, release the pin, let our tensioner kick out, and just like that, our engine is in time. So now what I like to do at this, at this point is just to double check everything to make sure that our links and our lines and our marks are all lined up, because as soon as we spin this engine over, they're not gonna line up again, okay? This is a one and done type of thing. It's a little bit nerve wracking at this point because um, yeah, this is basically the point of no return. So check all your marks, make sure everything lines up. And then you can always look at this, uh, this picture here. This is what the timing should look like in stage two. So it's pointing to where all the marks are located, all the links are located. So you can go ahead and verify that everything looks good and compare it to what you're looking at right now in your engine. So again, we're lined up on our L and our L on our left side camshafts intake and exhaust, our pink link on there. If we look through our little sight window, we can see our yellow link on the intermediate or the uh, idler pulley here. On our primary chain, we're lined up on the mark, we're lined up on the other mark, and we're lined up on the third mark. And then on our uh, right side secondary chain, we're lined up on the circle here with our yellow mark travel up the chain to our R, our little triangle on the sprocket with the pink link and the R with the pink link on the other sprocket. So everything here appears in time. I guess the next step would be to, you know, spin this engine over, make sure that we don't run in, in, into any issues, any uh, interference, any pistons, hitting valves, type of thing like that. All right, well, here it goes. We're gonna spin it around a few times and then I'm gonna put it back into, uh, into stage two timing. Okay, so back on stage two timing, you can see that our links are not even close to where they should be on the chain. Um, I mean, eventually at some point, this thing should come back into time most likely, but I'm not gonna sit here and, and count <laughs> how many links it takes or how many, uh, how many revolutions of the crankshaft it takes to get everybody lined back up. If anybody's done it, is it 200, 400? I don't know, how many revolutions is this to get the, get the links lined back up? I mean, in theory, they should probably at some point. They lined up once, they should again, but um, what I'm gonna do now is actually, I was, I was able to locate some of the special tools. So they're just simple plates that go onto those flats of the camshaft, and there's uh, three individual plates here. So they'll line up with the position in either phase, uh, stage two or stage one, depending on, um, depending on what position it's in. So in theory, with this thing in stage two right now, my right side cams are sitting on the flats. The flats should be up. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna install this special tool on the back sides of the cams here, and it should slip right on, and it does. And now on our left side cams, they should be at an angle right now because we're in stage two. When our left side cams are in stage one, they should be flat, so that would take this tool. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna install this one onto our camshafts, and it should line up it should slip over them and line up like, like so. 
And chances are we're just a little bit off on our mark down here because neither of them lined up very good. There we go. So we're over that, we're over that. That tells me that even though my links aren't lining up, the dot on our crankshaft lines up with stage two and our special tools on the back sides of the cams are lined up appropriately. Now let's go ahead, spin this thing around to get it into stage one. Remember when you're going from stage one to stage two, the first time it lines up at five o'clock is not stage one. You gotta bring the crank around one more time to get all of our little marks up to the top and get this in the proper timing. It looks pretty close. Now we should have the flats up on our left side camshaft. And we do, that tool slips right over. We're off just a hair on the crank. Let's make sure we're good there. Beautiful. So the tool slips over there. And now on the, um, on the right side, we should uh, be able to install this tool onto there and slip right over. So I don't know if you guys are looking for a way to verify that the engine is actually in time after the links no longer line up. The special tools themselves aren't, um, I, I wouldn't say they're the, you know, the best machining or, or you know, the most accurate, but this is a good way to make sure that you're not off a tooth or two on a certain, certain one of these, these chains. If the tools line up, in stage one and stage two timing like, like they should and the crank lines up with its dot down there at the bottom, you should be all set to go, okay? So I hope you guys appreciate this video. I hope you use this video next time you're gonna go ahead and do timing chains on a 3.6 liter. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you guys liked what you saw, please give us that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and um, I think that's it. I guess we'll see you guys in number three where I have all of this put back together because that's just a lot of nuts and bolts. I'm not gonna show it happening today, but we'll get it all put back together. I'm gonna get it onto the powertrain, into the vehicle. We'll get the vehicle up and running and we'll take some lab scope captures to actually verify after the fact that this is, uh, this is fixed and that way you guys can use those lab scope captures and that technique in order to check for timing electronically on this engine before you tear it down. So again, thank you so much for watching, and as always, happy wrenching, everyone. Thank you.